Welcome to Psalms of the Savior, Devotions for His Sheep. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today we're looking at Psalm 48, and the title of my devotional is The Glorious City of God. And we're looking at Psalm 48, verse 9, which says, We have fought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Well, this psalm proclaims and displays that there's no city like God's city. In wonder at what God would do, both Paul and Isaiah declare, No eye has seen, nor nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. That's in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 and quote uh, in part at least Isaiah 64 verse 4. And this psalm is very much what they're talking about. That God has prepared for us a place to be with him forever. And how awesome, how great that place is. Now, we need to understand, according to 1 Corinthians 2.10, the very next verse that Paul will, will talk about, that any knowledge we do have has been revealed by the Spirit. He says, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. And in part, that is by the written word, that all Scripture is God-breathed and profitable for us. But it's in this in particular here, this is not a physical city that we're to think about in in the sense of everything is spoken literally of an architectural kind of city, but it's visible to our soul and our heart. Um, In fact, this is a city that no one has actually seen or or heard or or actually known, uh, but it's something that God makes known by his spirit. Um, The word for thought on in our verse, we have thought on your steadfast love, O God, connotes imagination so that we can creatively see how his love is is displayed. Now, if we were to look at the imagery found in this psalm, we see that, first of all, the city of God with his presence in Israel's midst is like a mighty mountain, a fortress against all enemies. It really is is awesome. Verses 1 to 3 of this psalm talk about it. Um, beauty in it, beautiful in elevation, verse 2, is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion in the far north, the city of, of the great king. So this city is also a mountain um, as well. Now that's to, to help us to think of the glory of a mountain. So is the glory of God's city. Um, enemies are assembled against God's people. Um, those that are, are assembled are shattered like ships, we see in verses 4 through through 7. Um, that uh, even they were, there was anguish placed upon them. They were in panic, we see, uh, and that, they shat- that God shattered them. Now, then in verses 8 to 9, God reveals his steadfast love to the ears and eyes of those within the city, establishing them forever. Um, that's an awesome thing to understand is that uh, God, part of being in God's place and where he is, is a firm foundation um, and we don't have to fear um, if God is there he's protecting us he he helps us and and so on now also what we see in verses 10 through 14 is that this city both fills the earth and includes people of every generation um, that's um, what we see as we The praise, God's praise reaches to the ends of the earth. And that's God's desire is that his glory would fill the earth even as the waters cover the sea. Uh, And we see that this is, we're we're told to even walk walk about Zion, that that God's city go around her. There's no city like this. Uh, And even that this is God, our God forever and ever. This is what he has done, but also partly this is who he is. He is. There's no city, there's no God like our God. The book of Revelation further helps us to imaginatively picture the city of God. There we see that all human enemies, along with the evil one who deceived them, gather themselves to make war against God's city, but they're destroyed by Jesus' coming. And so Revelation 27 to 10 are very similar to what we see here in uh, in verse 4 to, to 7. And then we have the glory of God's people as being portrayed by the bringing together of a mighty mountain and the heavenly city of Jerusalem uniting both heaven and earth in the fulfillment of God's glorious plan. That's a lot like 1 to 3 of our, of our passage. 
Surpassing all other earthly communities, the greatness of God's temple, city, and people proclaim the glory of God. Uh, and we see, for example, um, Psalm 48, verse 14 says that, that this is God, our God, forever and ever. As we proclaim the works of his hands, this is his work. This is what he has done. This is who he is. Um, and we give, as we see what he has done, what he's prepared for us, we give glory to God. And God's power is at work within his people in order that all things might bring him bring him glory. That's a very purpose. As God is glorified, man is most satisfied. Uh, and as God is lifted up and exalted, God pours out salvation. He pours out his grace. As we declare his mercy and grace, people respond by receiving it. They respond by wanting it, wanting more and drawing close to him. So how do you picture the glory of God being revealed in his people today? Um, do you realize that we're part of this city? We're part of the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, and 16, 19, and 20 declare that we are the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and also we're citizens of heaven according to Philippians 3, verse 20 as, as well. So how does your hope for the future increase as you picture the city of God? And that's part of the design of this psalm. Part of what we see in, in Revelation 21 and 22 is that we should desire, we want to be there. We don't want to miss out what God has in store for us. How awesome is our God? And the, the greatest things about the city is that God is there. He's present. He's what the, the king being present is what the kingdom is, is all about. You don't want to miss out on the king. And we get to have a personal relationship with the king now. And even Paul said in um, Romans chapter 14 that the kingdom of God is not, doesn't, isn't composed of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And we get to have and participate in those things even now. Eternal life, kingdom life, the life in the city of God already starts even now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this psalm and it puts a hope in our heart that what you have in store for us is so great, and so grand. Um, but Lord, no one wants to miss out on this. So Lord, let us revel, let us uh, remember, let us imaginatively think and ponder what you have in store for us. But also let us tell others, let's not keep silent. But Lord, you don't want any to perish, but you want all to come to life. You want all to come to know you as Savior and Lord. So Lord, let us uh, remind ourselves, let us live there, let us enjoy all that you give us, but also let us not be silent to, to our neighbor. Let us make sure that we are um, helping others. We thank you. By the power of the Spirit, we can do so. In your name we pray. Amen.